or we're back in Townsville. It's that time of year where we have to start thinking about our departure south because it's cyclone season. But first, we have a final tour and farewell. We hire some e-scooters and have a day on the town. We check out some fabulous street art before we head to Eat Street for some amazing entertainment and a great rugby game. We continue on our journey south where we run into the perfect storm and then get caught on a fish trap. So stay tuned to see how we free ourselves from the fish trap and discover a huge stormwater pipe washed ashore at Percy Island. Well here we are back in Townsville for a few days. It was so much easier to stay in a marina because of some of the planned activities we have. We found the easiest way to get around is on e-scooters. So here we are out and about on a day of discovery. Okay. Looks like a scooter day today. First stop is the ocean siren lighting sculpture that was modelled on a young indigenous girl from the Walguru Kaaba tribe. The ocean siren is part of the Museum of Underwater Art. It reacts to live water temperatures data from the Davies Reef weather station on Great Barrier Reef and it changes colour in response to the different variations in water temperature. Townsville city street laneways and alleyways showcase a range of vibrant street art murals by local and internationally renowned artists. We were lucky enough to be in Townsville when there was a double header rugby test match with Australia playing Argentina and the All Blacks playing the Springboks. It was great to soak up the atmosphere in the streets surrounding the ground, which is normal when there's a test match in a city.
seats at the ground were right in front of where the Argentinian side were warming up, so that was fantastic. The whole atmosphere within the ground was really, really good, and the people of Townsville were really excited to have a rugby union test match in their city. We had the best time scootering around Townsville. There was just so much on offer to see. But we still had over a thousand nautical miles to sail to get home and with cyclone season upon us, our next port of call was Airlie. So we've left Airlie Beach and um, we're on our passage south. A lovely northerly wind and following sea. Even though the tide's against us, we're still doing seven knots. So we're not sure whether we're going to go to Thomas Island and stay there for the night, then on to Keswick, or whether with this fantastic northerly we might go all the way to Keswick. So we'll wait and see. And then from Keswick we'll be heading down to Percy, Percy down to Island Head Creek, and Island Head Creek down to Temple. So we've got a nice window of northerlies at the moment. Well, the weather gods were with us. We had a fabulous sail to Keswick and St. Bees Island. We had an overnight stay and we were up early the following morning as we had a 60 nautical mile sail ahead of us to Percy Islands. We were meeting up with friends Phil and Fee on Pacific Dreams. This city is relentless It wears me down and leaves me dry I could use some well, Here we are again back on Middle Percy Island as we head south home Still got a long way to go but this is one of my favourite places along the Australian East Coast We went ashore on Percy Island to find a group of yachties trying to manoeuvre a very large pipe that had washed ashore. It looks like the boys are just in time. I'm not quite sure what is going on here, but Robin and Annie, who are the leasees of Percy, have got some work. <laughs> Apparently the hollow pipe had washed ashore some time ago, maybe months or years, but Rob and Annie decided that the pipe would make a great rainwater tank adjoining the A-frame. We look forward to the 2022 sales season to see how it all worked out. Once again it was time to move on. Our next port of call is Port Clinton. We are sailing with our friends Pacific Dreams. Well, once we safely anchored in Port Clinton, we decided to do a bit of exploring ourselves around this lovely estuarine harbour. It was previously known as Port Bowen, which was the name given to the harbour by Captain Matthew Flinders way back in 1802. Though this was changed in 1892 to Port Clinton, so as to avoid confusion with the Port of Bowen. Well, after a lovely stay, we were on the move south to the Keppel Islands. We had to sail through Shoalwater Bay, where there was a military training exercise happening. We didn't hang around for too long. Well, we finally made it to the Keppel Islands. We anchor in Monkey Bay and we head over to the viewing platform to do a bit of snorkeling.
So this is how we roll. The bells is there. With the wind behind us, we continued on our bearing south to Pancake Creek. Little did we know what faced us ahead. We weren't sure what effect the storm cell would have on us, but looking at the radar, there seemed to be two storm cells fast developing and joining together. We decided that our best option would be to drop the mainsail and bring in the headsail and drift along with both engines on hoping at the same time that the storm sill would head east out to sea. We were very fortunate with the storm and the lightning strikes all around us that we didn't suffer lightning strike. However, we had another challenge ahead of us. We had some issues with the throttle cable getting stuck. We'd either be stuck in reverse or stuck in forward. So I had a look inside and one of the cables had actually come loose. But like all things to do with boats, trying to get at it was a bit of an issue. It was the most awkward thing to try and get at. But in the end, perseverance won out. But we went to Bunnings and now we've got the right right-handed Phillips head screwdriver tool to be able to do it. So. Uh, Hopefully, if it happens again, it won't be as much of an issue. We were having a wonderful sail heading towards Sandy Straits when suddenly we heard a thud and a continuous banging noise. We suspected we'd become tangled on a fish trap. I dropped the GoPro down and I saw that the fish trap had tangled itself around our rudder. I tried unsuccessfully to free it with our boat hook. I looked at Peter, he looked at me, he drew the short straw and he managed to unfree us and we were once again on our way. There's something unique about the Great Sandy Straits with its complex landscape of mangroves, sandbanks, mud islands and seagrass beds. The strait is an important habitat for marine life. Migrating whales use the calm waters of the strait to rest for a few days between July and November. But for us, it's an easier way to cruise through, passing other yachties along the way before we meet once again the notorious Wide Bay Bar. We made it through the sandy straits to Inskip Point and thought the sea state didn't look too bad. So we'd have a run out through White Bay Bar even though the tide was going out. We called Marine Rescue and they said it wasn't too bad. So out we go through White Bay Bar, but as you know you really shouldn't go through a bar on an outgoing tide. Even though the swell wasn't that big, we got rocking horse conditions all the way through and Sue was a little bit concerned about how shallow it actually was because we had new waypoints to, to go through. It was fun though, got out the other end and it was another experience. Watching this 40 foot Naughty Tech catamaran follow our path out gives you a bit of an indication of how rocky it actually was coming into the swell. After our crossing a wide bay bar, 
we made it into Double Island Point, only to be greeted by another storm cell. We were pretty much getting used to them by now, so we just sat back and let it blow over. On our next Look and View episode, we make it to Brisbane and head straight up the river for some city time. We have a night out on the town on East Street where celebrations are alive with Halloween. We discover some great islands and sand hills around Moreton Bay and we couldn't believe it, we misjudged the tides. This is what happens when we miscalculate the tide. <laughs> <laughs>